I dare you! Attention all schedulers, project managers, and anyone brave enough to wield Primavera P6. Today, we're diving into a feature that's as powerful as it is perilous, the expected finish feature. If you've ever wanted to tame the chaos of schedule adjustments with a single input, then you're looking at a double-edged sword of scheduling mastery. Let's explore why it's awesome and why it's also a potential landmine for your carefully crafted plans. Stay tuned. This is a must-know. First, let's talk about the brilliance of the expected finish feature. Imagine this. You've got a team member telling you that task A will absolutely positively wrap up by next Friday, but the task hasn't even started yet, and your schedule is sticking to its automated guns. Frustrating, right? That's where expected finish swoops in like a scheduling superhero. It allows you to override traditional frameworks, letting you lock in a completion date manually. And here's the kicker. It's smart enough to recalculate the remaining duration on its own. No more endless back and forth adjustments. You set the date and boom, the system adjusts itself. Need to align your schedule with a real world deadline? No problem. Expected finish lets you dynamically course correct in progress tasks that are falling off the timeline. It's a tool of precision, a scalpel in the hands of a skilled scheduler. But with great scheduling power comes great responsibility. Misuse it, and you could find yourself in a whirlwind of mangled activity durations, distorted baselines, and deadlines that aren't just missed. They're outright ignored. Let's start with one of the silent traps of expected finish, its impact on not started activities. This is where many newcomers slip up. Here's the scenario. You have a task scheduled to take 10 days, but suddenly you need it to finish later than expected. So you set an expected finish date 19 days out. The smart recalculation kicks in to adjust the remaining duration. Cool, right? Sure until you realize that the original duration, that precious baseline of 10 days, is now gone. Even if you remove the expected finish date later, the remaining duration locks in at 19 days. That's right, the damage is permanent. Your original baseline? Toast. How do you avoid this sneaky trap? Only use expected finish for in-progress tasks. For not started activities, think of the feature as an explosive that hasn't been defused. You can adjust them manually, but don't finalize the schedule until you've removed any rogue expected finish dates floating around. Next up, say hello to the data date disaster. If you're not familiar, the data date represents the current progress cutoff in your project. Now, here's where things get dicey. If you set an expected finish date earlier than the data date, for an in-progress task, Primavera P6 flips the table and assigns a remaining duration of zero. It treats the activity as if it's already completed. Zero warnings. Zero reminders. The deadlines you've carefully planned. Instantly vaporized. The lesson here? Always validate your expected finish dates against the data date to make sure your settings actually work as intended. And then, there's the matter of constraints, the iron rules of scheduling, or so it seems. You might think your finish on, or start on, or after constraints are solid, unshakable, but expected finish plays by its own rules. Once you set an expected finish date, it overrides most constraints entirely. The only time constraints hold their ground is if the activity hasn't started yet or if the expected finish date lands before the constraint date. For anything else, goodbye constraints, hello chaos. Always double check how these settings interact before locking in your schedule. Oh, and let's not forget about the calendar quirks. Here's a little known fact. If you set an expected finish date 
on a non-working day, Primavera P6 quietly adjusts it to the next working day without alerting you. It's subtle, but if you're not paying attention, you might miss a shift in your deadlines that could snowball into bigger issues down the line. Again, vigilance is the key here. Always review the calendar alignment for every expected finish you assign. So, how do you harness this tool without letting it destroy your schedule from the inside out? Start by adding the expected finish column to your layout. Primavera P6 doesn't flag these dates prominently, so you have to make sure they're visible, front and center. Then, make it a habit to cross-check every expected finish date in relation to your day-to-date -date activity calendar and constraint. And most importantly, for tasks that haven't started yet, delete any expected finish entries before you finalize your schedule and call it a day. At its core, the expected finish is like a lightsaber. It gives you unmatched control, precision, and flexibility. But in untrained hands, it can just as easily cut through the solid foundation of your baseline schedule. Master its quirks, and you'll gain a new level of scheduling power. Misuse it. And, well, let's just say, there will be stakeholder emails. Lots of them. So, what's the verdict? Primavera P6's expected finish feature is a game changer, but only if you approach it with caution, skill, and a healthy respect for its hidden complexities. Remember, with great scheduling power comes great responsibility. Use it wisely, and you'll not only meet deadlines, you'll master them. Happy scheduling.